Thank you for tuning in to the Big Blue Boot Camp. My name is Pete Dignard, or Mr. Dignard, and I work as an admission officer at Andover. Today, I want to talk to you about teacher recommendations. Um, one of the requirements you need to submit in order to complete your application at Andover. Um, and I'll start this uh, talk by, by asking a question. The question is, why are teacher recommendations required in our application process? Uh, well, I think that most people can intuitively answer this question. Um, but, but more explicitly, I'll say that we require these recommendations as we're looking for students who are the right fit for our academic program. And we believe that your teacher recommendations give us a greater sense of what type of student you are. We purposely ask students to submit a recommendation from both their current math and current English teachers. Each, because each of those teachers know you in a little bit of a different way based on the content that they teach. I think the best way to actually understand how we use these recommendations is to take a peek at them. Um, and I recommend that all students look at those recommendations um, because they are available to you right online. And one way to find them um, is just going, by, going to our website. Um, and on our website, we try to keep um, a lot of information for you guys to look through. You can go to the admission section. Um, and, and through the admission section, you'll find plenty of links to our online application portal, which is called Gateway to Prep School. Um, so if you're to click on this link, will bring you to Gateway to Prep School. Um, and that uh, is where you will be submitting all of your application materials. Um, and up here at the top, there's a little tab that's resources. Um, and in this resource tab, you will find all the pieces to the application. Now this isn't where you submit these pieces, but it does give you an opportunity for your reference to see um, what it is you will be submitting. Um, and one of the things you'll be submitting is a current English teacher recommendation. So let's take a look at that. Um, here is the current English teacher recommendation. Uh, your English teacher has an opportunity to describe you um, and the way you operate in your class. You'll be able to tell us a little bit about who you are as a student, as a writer, as a reader. Um, we also ask how well you accept advice and criticism uh, because we think that students, the best students, are ones who take that advice and act on it and grow and learn. Right? That is what we believe uh, education is, the, the ability um, to grow and learn. Um, and they also have an opportunity um, to fill out this little matrix of questions about your academic potential, um, who you are, different personal uh, qualities, right, in, in relation to other students in your class. Um, at the end of this recommendation, there's an opportunity for your teachers to write a little bit about your character. Um, or any other additional information they may have about you as a student. Um, and the math recognition is pretty similar. Um, I think the math recognition differs in that um, we try to dive a little bit deeper into the math that you have taken so far in your life uh, because that helps us uh, understand the context of uh, the education you are coming from. But again, uh, there's an opportunity for teachers uh, to write about who you are as a student, um, your knowledge in math, your effort, your performance, again, all these personal qualities, um, and of course, an opportunity to talk about your character and citizenship. Um, and, and, you know, these are documents that we will be looking at really closely uh, during our selection process. The admission committee um, reads these recommendations very, very closely uh, because we are looking for students who not only love to learn, but are positive members of their learning environments that collaborate well with each other. Uh, we're looking for students that teachers love to teach. Um, and I wanted to show everyone those recommendations um, because there's a very common question I get um, right now over the past couple of months, uh, which is how will my teachers get to know me and write them a recommendation when I only get to see them through a Zoom screen, right? For some of you, you may have just met your teachers uh, a week or a month ago. Um, and I think that this is a great question, but it's not the right question. Um, I would ask you to think about it a different way. Instead of asking that question, I would ask, what can I do to ensure that my teachers know me well when they sit down to write my recommendations? Right? Um, and I think that's a very important distinction in the way that you ask these two questions and you think about these two questions, right? Because the second question um, allows you to understand that you have a lot of control right now 
over what your teachers write about you. You want your teachers to say that you are an awesome student? Go and be an awesome student, right? Make sure that you're on top of all of your work. Make sure that you are as helpful as possible um, in your classrooms, whether those are in person or virtually, right? Um, instead of you know, asking about things that you have no control over, focus on the things that you have control over in this process, right? And students also typically ask about the timeline about asking for applications, or recommendations, I should say. Um, in, in order for your teachers to submit their recommendations, you must first create a candidate profile on the Gateway to Prep School application portal. If you've yet to do this, I highly recommend taking some time this weekend to do just that. Um, on that portal, you'll also be able to send your teachers an email with a link to fill out an online recommendation. Um, and we you typically find that that is the most convenient process for teachers to submit these recommendations. Uh, while you could ask your teacher to fill out these recommendations now, I typically encourage students to wait till around December to send these recommendations um, so that your teachers have more of an opportunity uh, to get to know you. Um, in the meantime, you could use this as an opportunity to reach out and connect to your teachers to let them know that you will be asking for recommendations. Um, typically, this is best done in person, but many students will not have the opportunity to do that this year. Instead, you might want to ask over email or over some other form of virtual communication you have with your teachers. Um, sending your teachers recommendations in December gives them ample time to write those recommendations before our February 1st application deadline. And finally, in my experience, I find that teachers are some of the most amazing people on earth. And they take the time to fill out these recommendations, um, not for their own personal gain, uh, but in order to help you, in order to help students. Uh, please, please remember to thank them and thank them, and then thank them some more, right? That goes a long way in this process, um, because as we know, our teachers are overwhelmed with quite a bit um, in this pandemic, as we all are. Um, and, and I'm positive that they will appreciate all forms of gratitude. Um, and through this entire process, just remember, um, the best recommendations are typically written um, for students who do everything in their power to be the best student that they can be. Um, and I hope that you find this helpful. Um, I'm always more than happy to answer any questions you have. So please reach out to me um, on my email if there's anything I can do to help. Uh, with that said, good luck this year.